I want to talk to you about upper conditioning. What you know as dog training is trainer's definition of upper conditioning, which is the quadrants of dog training. As terms, they are interchangeable. The quadrants of dog training, however, are garbage, okay? And they turn around and they blame Skinner. If you get on Google, you'll find all kinds of stuff, Skinner's quadrants. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Skinner had nothing to do with the quadrants. It's all one big lie. If you don't understand what's going on, Conrad Most book, Training Dogs, is the very basis for dog training today. When Conrad spoke about positive and negative conducements, this is what's the basis of dog, or uh, quadrants of dog training today. If you get into a B.F. Skinner and you actually read his books, because dog trainers know that dog owners won't uh, reinforce, they won't read uh, Skinner's books. They won't verify what dog trainers are saying. So when you look at the uh, book about behaviorism, if everybody read about behaviorism, you would understand what's going on in society today. You would understand your children a whole lot better. You would understand your dog a whole lot better, your cat, every animal around you. Operant conditioning has to do with survival in the environment over the choices that you make, good and bad. Okay? Survival at the fittest. If you make a bad enough choice, you're taken out of the game. You're killed. You die. You're no longer part of the uh, survival of the fittest. That's what upper conditioning is. If your child reaches out and touches the hot stove, they get burned. That burn is a negative consequence of choice. That's upper conditioning. The child learns to avoid flight from the stove. Don't do it again. Monty is 12 years old. A few years ago, he found a uh, wasp nest, and he upper conditioned himself because he got stung 12 times. He upper conditioned himself to fight or flight avoid wasp nests. Okay, He's never done it again. This is operant conditioning. We need to look at uh, operant conditioning not as positive and negative reinforcement, but positive and negative consequences for your actions, for your choices in life, for your choices in the environment. Okay? Human beings can rationalize away fear. If you meet something new in the environment, you can rationalize away whether it's a, uh, something to be concerned about or not. Should I be afraid or should I just uh, become indifferent to it? Is it worthwhile being afraid? Dogs can't do that. Dogs don't rationalize in that sense. Dogs are very honest about their emotions. So if something in the environment they're not sure of, that's all fear is, is lack of trust and understanding. Okay? So when a dog meets something in the environment it's not sure of or scared of, they're very, very honest, and they show their reactivity, you know, under various levels of fear. That's operant conditioning. Your job is not to operantly condition your, job, your dog. Your job is to let your dog make choices to operantly condition themselves for good or bad. Okay? Trainers will tell you that the, uh, you, know, you should be aware of the environment. So I watch dog owners as a result. They're always scanning the environment, looking for bad. Okay? If you're anticipating the worst, guess what? Your dog is reading you like a book. And they're watching you in real time in ways you can't even fathom. Human beings are apes. We're descended from apes. We're prey animals. When you get scared, you give off a fear pheromone. Guess what? Your dog smells that right away. Your dog doesn't even need to be looking at you. If you're sitting in the living room on the couch and your dog is across the room from you, they know they can detect the heart rate. They detect literally the rate of your heart. So if all of a sudden you get scared, they're going to react to it. They don't need to be uh, looking at you. This is the amazing part with dogs. Okay? If you get scared, they know it. If you're anticipating the worst, they're standing beside you going, what's going on? Why are you suspicious? The only environment your dog really gives a shit about is the one at the end of the leash. They don't care about the rest of the environment. If your dog doesn't trust you in that environment, guess what? They're going to be reactive. They're going to display aggression. That's their positive reinforcement because everything around them is a negative reinforcement. If you listen to uh, John Stodden and his interview with Ivan Benevolov, he tells you point blank, when you're using treats, you're actually creating competing behaviors. You're putting something between you and your dog. You're developing a food relationship with your dog. The dog is doing for what you got in your hand. This is why you, uh, people are asking, you know, why won't my dog sit without a treat? Because you've conditioned your dog. You haven't properly really conditioned your dog. You've conditioned your dog to do for uh, a, a piece of food, not for you. And I'm constantly telling owners that you need to be the highest value treat in your dog's life. Stop looking for the highest value treat. And if you want to find the highest value treat, go look in the mirror. That's what you need to do. If you want to understand the animal that your dog is, go look in the uh, go take a long, hard look in the mirror at the animal staring back at you. Because you don't understand yourself anymore. Human beings can't understand the animal that we are anymore. And if we can't understand the animal that we are, we don't stand a snowball's chance in hell and understand the dog. You see, dog trainers are lying to you through their teeth, and most of them don't even know they're lying. They learn what they learn in school, and that's it. And it's all about operant conditioning, a method of behavioral modification using rewards and punishment, the quadrants. 
And that's all every certification is today. It's all based on quadrants. I don't care who you are. Okay? If you're certified in dog training and operant conditioning, you're certified in a lie. Okay? And then do you come at me? Do you got positive reinforcement trainers out there coming at me going, oh, yeah, show me your certifications. I don't want any part of all this garbage. Okay? I have a love of psychology. I've been a lifelong student of psychology. Psychology, how do you define psychology? It's the very study of the mind and behavior. Okay? That's psychology. I see no psychology whatsoever in dog training today. They don't give a shit about psychology. They could care less about the science of behavior because they threw the science of behavior in the garbage. The science of behavior, according to B.F. Skinner, is just governing the causes of the behavior. I dare anybody to show me one trainer that actually shows in video that they actually care about the cause of the behavior. Okay? I want to see it. You'll see Zach George. He talks all about the cause of the behavior, but then he goes to war with the dog. He doesn't care about the cause of the behavior because there's no money in understanding the cause of the behavior. When dog owners understand the cause of their dog's behaviors, you don't need a trainer. You can tell trainers to go fly to hell somewhere, okay? And you can do it on your own. The reality is you're being told by dog trainers and dog owners alike that, hey, hire a trainer because you can't possibly do it on your own. The problem is trainers shouldn't be working in behavior. That's the job of a behaviorist, okay? Behaviorists are supposed to be dealing with the behaviors in dogs. Dog trainers should be training dogs, okay? Unfortunately, about 15, 20 years ago, dog trainers got out of their lane most of these arseholes couldn't even train a dog to sit, but yet they jumped into the behavioral ring with their treats and clickers and prongs and e-collars and all these tools to control and quadrants and protocols that don't make sense. And this is where we are today. The war in dog training. Positive reinforcement versus uh, balanced. And people are so vested in it. I'm watching dog owners at each other's throats as a result. Dog trainers are doing nothing but applying negative reinforcement to dog owners. They have you drowning in an ocean of negative reinforcement. And your positive reinforcement when in the face of a negative reinforcement is to fight, flight, or become indifferent to it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is B.F. Skinner. That is your positive reinforcement. So when your dog is barking and raging and being reactive, that is their positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is operant conditioning. Positive reinforcement isn't always positive. Negative reinforcement isn't always negative. That's a fact. That's B.F. Skinner, okay? Negative reinforcements are everywhere in the environment. It's the things that we're unsure of, the things that we're scared of, it's the things that we don't want in our life. Your positive reinforcement is your desire for the good things, but it's also your desire to remove the bad things. And that desire to remove the bad things is the negative side of positive reinforcement. That's your fight, flight, or become indifferent. And I always like to use the example of spiders. If you're scared of spiders, then spiders are a negative reinforcement to you. When you see a spider, you've got three choices. You can fight, you can kill a spider or throw it outdoors. That's your positive reinforcement, the removal of negative. You're throwing a spider outside, that's, you're removing the negative reinforcement. Choice number two is to uh, flight, to remove yourself from the negative reinforcement. You're gonna run away from the spider or jump on the chair. Or option three is to become indifferent to the spider. Overcome your fear of spiders. Make the spider not a big deal. That's operant conditioning. Not quite the parallel with uh, what trainers are telling you, are they? Okay? Trainers are telling you to operantly condition your dog. That you're supposed to be applying treats, you're supposed to be applying prongs, e-collars, and everything else. That's not how operant conditioning works. And that's the reason why there's so many dog training venues right now with thousands of dog owners that are so confused, they're frustrated, and they're being told to kill their dogs. Okay? The result of all this bullshit is just, it's heartbreaking to me. I'm watching dog owners get into Facebook groups, like the aggressive dog group, for example, on Facebook. That group should be shut down. Owners get in there, they put about especially aggressive pit bulls. And there's always that chorus, the same chorus of birds chirping the same song. Kill the dog, kill the dog, kill the dog because it's genetic. Okay? This is what we're at right now. It's not genetic. There's a whole list of things that need to be investigated before we jump to uh, genetics. Treats, dog food, dog training. These are the primary causes of aggression in dogs. Okay? Dogs need choice. Social cognition. Children learn through social cognition. Watch, learn, make choices, observe other people's behaviors. This is how dogs are supposed to learn. But dogs are never given a choice because trainers tell you not to, make, not to make, let your dog make a choice. They tell you don't trust your dog. You don't need to trust your dog. Well, guess what? Cesar Milan has been preaching for over 30 years now that it's mutual trust and respect that builds confidence in any relationship. If you don't trust, then you're in a toxic relationship with your dog. You don't need dog training. You need a relationship intervention. And that's all I'm doing. 
When I meet dogs, I'm actually doing a relationship intervention. I don't want the owner around because the owner is part of the problem, whether they like to admit it or not. The dog is going to react to them. If I enter a backyard and the owner is there with the dog, I guarantee the dog is going to come at me. Remove the owner, change the environment, and you always see a different dog. Dogs always run away from me because they're actually scared. If the owner is there, guess what? They're going to grow a set of balls and try to fight back. Get rid of the owner. But yet, all we ever see on YouTube is dog trainers. The owner's there, the owner's present, the very reason why the dog's going to flip shit. And now we got all bravado. Now we're dealing with an aggressive dog because the owner's there. The dog's going to protect the owner. The dog's been brought into a brand new training facility. The dog's not given a chance to investigate, to sniff anything. The owner's scared. The dog is scared. The trainer is scared. Of course, the dog's going to flip shit. But now we got something to do well watch, right? That's the entire problem. They know that the dog's going to flip shit because the owner's there. They know that because of the environment, the dog's going to flip shit. But yet, if they grow a set of balls and meet the dog without the owner, there's nothing to record because the dog's going to be running away in fear, not, uh, not trying to eat the uh, trainer. This is the reality, people. This is the very reality. And I dare any dog trainer to come at me. I dare any dog trainer to come to me and request a podcast because I would love to get you online. And I don't care if you're positive reinforcement or uh, balanced. I want to get you on a podcast and I want, the, uh, I want your audience to understand the science. But you won't dare. Okay? I've requested podcasts with many, many trainers. And they will not dare once they, uh, once they understand because I'm going to rip your ass apart with the science. And video to back it up. If any trainer out there wants to do a podcast with me, contact me. Feel free. I'll do it anytime, anywhere. But we're going to be uh, setting some ground rules. You're going to ask questions. I'm going to answer them. I'm going to ask questions, and you're going to answer them in front of your viewers. And I want to copy the video so there's nothing hidden. There's nothing edited out. Okay? That's the reality. That's what I want. I got science in my ass pocket. You got a bunch of pseudoscience in your ass pocket, and you're lying to dog owners. There's a reason why trainers don't want to talk to me. There's a reason why trainers ridicule people like me. There's a reason why trainers went after Cesar Milan, and it wasn't because of Shadow or a pig. They had to destroy the message for the cash cow. That's the only reason. You'll notice the trainers, they won't allow anything else but quadrants. If you don't focus on quadrants, they don't want you around. And let me tell you something. People ask me why I call myself a dog trainer. There's a uh, very simple reason for it. I call myself a dog trainer so I can get in good with the, uh, with the uh, dog training groups, so I can get into the dog training groups and watch what's going on, to talk to trainers, to see the bullshit that they're pushing. And I wish the average dog owner can get into a uh, dog trainer group. Go ahead and join them and watch. Watch what's going on. Listen to the conversations. Watch how flippant that they are about killing dogs. It'll make you sick.